Hello friends, it's just Khan here and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a laser effect in Godot for a top-down shooter game. So let's start with the explanation. So first of all, of course we have the player here on the left hand side, the player has the gun and we have an enemy here or we have like a box or something else that we placed inside of the game. The effect that we're trying to create is a laser that's going to start at the tip of the player's gun and it's going to extend until it hits either an enemy, a box, anything with like a collision shape that we can detect. So that's the effect. How are we going to create this? First of all, for the visuals, we can simply use a line 2D, which is a node that we can use that can draw a 2D line onto the screen. Very straightforward, extremely simple. We're going to give it some points. The first point is going to be here and the second point is going to be in this case here. And it's simply going to draw a line in between those two points. But the problem here is the line 2D doesn't really know anything about this world. It doesn't have physics, it doesn't have collision, it doesn't know where to stop. So we need to provide that information to line 2D. And to do that, we can use a raycast. And the raycast is going to go from the player's gun into the game, just like that. And then the raycast is going to give us this point right here using the get collision point function. So for example, if we were casting the raycast here, it would give us this point in world position. So for example, this might be 100 by 200, right? And then we would give this to the line 2D and then line 2D would draw a line from the tip of the player's gun until that point and then you know, stop there. That's what we're going to do in order to you know, set the line's length dynamically to what it's supposed to be. And in the case that we're not hitting anything with the laser, so for example, if you know, the gun is here and then the laser is just going to go like that and there's nothing in the path, we're simply going to make it long enough so that it goes outside of the screen so that it gives the illusion of you know, the line going really you know, deep into the, into the game. So you know, that's how we're going to achieve all of this. Okay, so that's the basic explanation. Let's go into Godot and start working on this. So let's go into the world and let's actually play the game and see what it looks like right now. As you can see, we have the player, we have the enemies that follow the player. We can shoot the enemies. Whoops, I'm gonna turn my sound off so that I don't capture it with my microphone. But as you can see, we have the game. If you haven't seen how I did all of this, um, there's a link in the description to the playlist where you can get the tutorials to create this exact game, if that's what you want to do. But in this one, like I said, we're simply going to create the line effect so that we can see exactly where we're pointing because actually we're not gonna have the mouse cursor in the game in the long term. So we want to know if we're hitting the enemy or not. Okay, so let's go into the player and let's create a line 2D node. And we can simply call this laser line 2D. Okay, and as soon as you select a line 2D, you will see a set of tools up here. The first one is used to create a point. So while you have it selected, you can click on any location and create a point for the line. The second one is used to move these points so that you can make adjustments. And the third one is used to delete them. It's like that. So we're not going to use these because you can also do this manually from the inspector using the points property here. You can simply click on it and you can create the elements that you want. In this case, we want one point at the start of the gun and one at the, you know, a little bit further on the X axis. So the first one is going to be the tip of the gun, let's say 60 for that. And the second one is going to be something like a thousand, just like that. And we're going to set this from the script, obviously. So this is just for us to see it while we work on it. It's not going to be the final value. As you can see, whoops, 
<laughs> if you create something by accident like me, you can simply delete it like that. Okay. So as you can see, that's what the line looks like. Currently it's white and it's too thick. So we're simply going to click on it, change the default color to be red. And I'm also going to decrease the alpha so that it's a little bit transparent, which is, I think it's going to look good. And then we can also change the width to be something like two. That should be good looking enough. And now, as you can see, it's kind of over the gun, which is, I don't want it to be that way. So I'm simply going to take it in the scene hierarchy and put it behind the body and the gun, just like that. Okay, and we can kind of turn off the raycast maybe. Okay, it's kind of difficult to see, but it's there. Yeah, so that's basically what we want to do here. There's a bunch of different options we can change here. We can give it a gradient, we can use a texture, we can change the caps. Caps are the ends here. For example, we can make the end round instead of just being like a box. And there's like a border you can create. There's a bunch of things you can play here. So feel free to give that a go, but we're going to continue with this and actually implement the functionality of the laser. Because at the moment, it will be visible, but as you can see, it's just being drawn all over the place. It's not stopping when it touches an object. Okay, so to achieve that, let's go into the player in here. Let's create a reference to this. We'll just say laser line, laser line 2D, just like that. And what we can do is in process, we can first check if the raycast is colliding. I can also do like, we're going to have two similar if statements. We can do them in one if statement if we want to, but I'm going to keep things separate and clean. So that's why I'm going to create it up here as well. So if the raycast is colliding, we can ask for the collision point. So before we were asking for the, you know, the collision object. Now we're specifically going to ask the point that the raycast is colliding. We can do that by saying shoot raycast, get collision point and save it in a variable called CP collision point. And if you control click on this, you'll see that it's going to return a vector two. Okay. And let's actually try to print this and see if it's working. You can see that while I'm pointing to an object, I'm getting a position. And if I'm just pointing into nothing, you will see that it's not really printing anything. But if I am, you will see that we'll get that point. Okay. Now you might just think you can take this collision point and set it to be the laser's second point here, but it's not going to work that way. And that's because that collision point is in world space. So it's the position in the entire world. But these laser positions here, the points, as you can see, it's 60 by zero, thousand by zero. These are local to the player. These are in this player scene. So we need to take the world position, the collision point, and turn it into the local, you know, coordinate space for the player. So to do that, we can simply use a function called to local. Very simple. We don't really need to get, you know, mathematical with this. We can just use this function and it's done just like that. And you can control click and, you know, read its description and stuff if you really want to. Now we can say, let's say, what did we call it? Laser line points, which is this guy right here, which is just like an array of vector twos. And since it's an array, we can get the the second element here, the one that we want to change by saying brackets one, because the first element is zero. The second element is one, the index. So that's how we can get that. And then we can set that to be local localized collision point. Okay. Now, as you can see, we basically have the effect working. If we get closer, farther away, you can see that it's working. 
Same with the box here. As you can see, the only problem is when we're not pointing to anything, it's just using like the last position or something else that's left in there. To fix that, we can simply say else if the raycast isn't colliding anymore, we'll simply set this to be vector two thousand by zero, the default value we had. Now it should be fixed. And as you can see, it is. Okay, it's working perfectly. So yeah, very important to set this to be local. Otherwise, you're just gonna get like a crazy laser that's not accurate at all, which is not what we want. So that's the basic effect. And there's a lot of things we can do with this. First of all, obviously we can make it look nicer, which we're going to do a little bit now. And we can also make the code a little bit more optimized as well. At the moment, we're setting this variable all the time over and over and over again in the process, which is probably not a good idea. So in this case, you should probably just set this once and that's it because it's never going to change if the raycast isn't colliding. And for this case, we should only set it if the laser actually moved, because if it hasn't moved, there's no reason to set the same, you know, collision point over and over again to it, basically. Yeah, I'm not gonna do those just now because you know I don't wanna make this tutorial 60 minutes long. So it's just something for you to do. Maybe after the tutorial, you can give that a go if you want to. So now let's try to make it look a little bit nicer. So there's a couple of things we can do to do that. The first one is using some particle effects. We would basically create some at the start here to signify that the laser is being emitted. And then we would put some at the end to signify the laser is hitting something. And then in the middle, we would also, you know, emit some particles um, to make it look nice, but not really gonna get into that. That can be a separate tutorial on its own because it's gonna take some work to set that up. And um, it's gonna be dynamic from the script as well. So if you want to see that, leave a comment and I'll try to make a video to add some particle effects to this laser. But what I want to do in this one is I want to use an animation to animate the width of the laser when we you know, turn it on so that we have something like a nice looking effect with it. So first of all, we're going to implement turning the laser on and off, and then we're going to create the animation. So first of all, let's create an input action and let's just call this toggle laser and we'll give this the right mouse button. And then in the player, let's see. Up here, we can just say, if input is action just pressed, toggle laser, then we can create a laser on variable, which is going to be a Boolean. Let's set it to be false at the start. And then we'll just say in the toggle here, we'll set it to be the opposite of whatever it was. So if it was true, we're going to set it to be false. If it was false, we'll set it to be true. Toggling it basically. And then we'll say laser line visible equals laser on. And then we can control the visibility of the laser and when we play at the start, it's not gonna work because it should be you know, turned off at the start. But then if you start toggling it, it's gonna work after that. Okay, it's working. And now simply at the start in ready, we simply need to say, we need to do the same thing again, basically. And we can turn this into a function, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this. And now when we start, the laser will be off. And when I press the right mouse button, it's going to turn on. And adding a sound effect to this will also make it, you know, much, much nicer. Just like we did with the, you know, the gun and the enemy hurt effect, which was in a different tutorial. 
if you want to take a look at that, take a look at the description. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we have the toggling. Next up, we're going to simply animate the width. Let's create an animation player here. Let's create a new animation. We'll just call this laser, turn laser on. And this is going to be very short, like 0.2 seconds or something like that. Let's take a look at it and we'll set the snap to be 0 0.01 so that we can really surgically move the needle here, just like that. And then at the start, we're simply going to click on the laser node. We're going to set the width to be zero, key this, and then after 0 0.3, 0 0.4, after this much, whatever that is, <laughs> we'll set this to be something larger than what we want it to be, like four pixel key that and at the end we'll bring it back down to two pixels and key that as well which is going to look like this it's kind of difficult to see it but it's gonna look good and we also created some reset tracks what's the width here for the reset let's just make it two and key that that's fine and we'll go back into turn laser on Okay, so we have the animation. Let's play it. Let's create a reference. And we are going to play it when we toggle it. So if it's visible, we'll say animation player play turn laser on. Let's see what that looks like. As you can see, it's not that huge of an effect, but it does add just a little bit of spice. And maybe actually we can make it a little bit more dramatic with this keyframe right here with the width. We can make it six to really and key that. Of course, don't forget really emphasize that this is being turned on just like that yeah okay it's starting to look nicer obviously you know it's not amazing but it's a start and like i said you can animate all of these things like the the whatever the border you can add a border you can do stuff with the cap you can do stuff with the fill here um, you can play, you can add like a curve to the width. You can do all sorts of things. Uh, but yeah, that's how to create the animation, um, how to toggle it, how to create the line, and how to make it dynamic using the Raycast's uh, collision point function. That's going to be it. If you do want to see me adding particle effects to this and making it look really, really nice, uh, leave a comment and I'll try to create one more tutorial for the you know to laser effect uh, to do all of that. Um, but besides that, um, if you have any other feedback, anything you want me to do in terms of a tutorial, a video, leave that as a comment as well. If you like this type of tutorials, uh, make sure to subscribe and also at the same time, join my email list to get updated on the work that I do. So there's a link for those in the description. So take a look and take care. I'll see you in the next video.